This video is on current limited zeros in analog circuits. To talk about current limited zeros, I'd like to refer to this circuit that we have here. And what we have is basically an input current flowing into this combined impedance, which is the parallel combination of an output resistor with a capacitor that has a resistor in series. So the output voltage is an ohmic translation of this current into this combined impedance. But let us add a little bit of insight. At very low frequencies, what we have is that the capacitor impedance is so high that the current that is drawn from that path is so low that almost the in entire input current goes into the output resistor. So the output voltage is an ohmic translation of the input current into that output resistance. Since it's entirely flowing into the output resistor, then what we have is basically that this output voltage is insensitive to frequency, but that's at very low frequencies. So as frequency continues to increase, what we see is that at some point, the capacitor current is significant enough or is high enough that it draws current from the output and then the output voltage starts dropping. I'll use different words. What we're saying here is that this capacitor path essentially shunts the output resistor. And in doing so, it steals current away and as a result produces the effect of a pole. So this pole happens essentially, and I'll kind of say it in different words, it essentially happens when this RC shunts this output resistor, which is like saying whenever this combined RC impedance is less than this output resistor. And I'll use even different words which will allow us to derive that frequency quite readily. It's when the, this capacitor shunts its equivalent parallel resistance, which is a series combination of these two. So <clears throat> the equivalent parallel resistance of the capacitor, we note here, we see that the capacitor on one side is connected to ground. So to find the equivalent parallel resistance, all we need to do is start from the other terminal and go through the network until we find ground again. And that is through RLM in series with RO. So the pole happens when this capacitor impedance shunts its equivalent parallel resistance, which is the series combination of those two resistors. So the frequency where this capacitor impedance is less than or equal to this uh, series combination of resistors is that pole, and that's the RC frequency here, the equivalent RC frequency. So when frequency is much less than this equivalent RC frequency, it doesn't shunt it. But when frequency is much greater than this RC frequency, we have that shunting effect producing the effect of a pole. Okay, so all we're saying is because this capacitor is in parallel with the output, it is shunting away current and it produces the effect of a pole. What is interesting here is that at some point the capacitor impedance is so low that it becomes a short circuit with respect to RLM. In becoming a short circuit, that means that the voltage across the capacitor becomes negligible. Another way of saying this is if we look at this capacitor current, this capacitor current is basically the output voltage into the combined series impedance going through that capacitor and series resistor. And as frequency increases, this impedance, uh, the capacitor impedance decreases and the capacitor current increases. But at some point, that impedance is so low that it becomes negligible with respect to RLM so the capacitor impedance, uh, capacitor current no longer increases past a certain frequency. And I'll say it in different words. We go back to the circuit here. At low frequencies, the capacitor current limits this parallel uh, current. But at high frequencies, this resistor current limits the capacitor current. 
So the effect of the resistor is to current limit the effect of the capacitor current. So at high frequencies, what we're saying is since the capacitor becomes a short circuit, the input current flows into the parallel combination of two resistors where there's no effect of a capacitor. What's important about, about this ohmic translation is that it becomes, again, insensitive to frequency. And I'll say it differently. At lower frequencies, we saw the effect of the capacitor, which is to draw current away from the output resistor and produce the effect of a pole. But at very high frequencies, since the effect of the capacitor becomes a short circuit, that those effects disappear. So the effect of the current limiting resistor is to remove the effects of the pole producing capacitor which is another way of saying is by is to add the effect of a zero. And since there's no inversion uh, produced here, it's the effect of an in-phase zero. And this happens basically when the capacitor impedance short circuits with respect to the series resistance, RLM. And placed in, in different terms is basically when the capacitor impedance is less than or equal to the RLM resistance. So at frequencies that are higher than that RC frequency, we see that the capacitor becomes a short circuit. So that RC frequency represents the location of that in phase zero. So to summarize these effects and see them more graphically, let us look at the gain plot. And this is the trans impedance gain across frequency. At very low frequencies, what we have is the capacitor is a, it's an open circuit, so the entire input current goes into the output resistor, and we have an ohmic translation of just the current into the resistor, which is insensitive to frequency, and that's what we see here. And we see that the gain at those uh, frequencies uh, is pretty much flat. As frequency increases, however, at some point, we're going to see that the capacitor current is high enough to have an impact on the output voltage. And the output voltage then will then drop with frequency. That happens after uh, the pole that that capacitor produces. And the gain uh, of the circuit and the output voltage start decreasing at, 20 d uh, at the rate of 20 dB per decade because the capacitor current increases with frequency at that range. Uh, and in that range of frequencies, what we have then is the output resistor in parallel with the capacitor impedance, and since the capacitor impedance is greater than the series resistance, the series resistance, it's almost, it has very little effect. So that's what we're saying here. Effectively, the combined impedance at that point is dominated by the capacitor and the output resistor. But at some point, as we continue to increase frequencies, the capacitor becomes a short circuit. When it becomes a short circuit, the input current flows into the parallel combination of just two resistors. And that's what we see here. Since we just have two resistors, uh, the ohmic translation is insensitive to frequency, so the gain is again flat. And that happens past this zero frequency that we just identified earlier, which is when the capacitor becomes a short circuit. To see the individual and independent uh, effect of that zero, let us consider that first the gain was dropping at 20 dB per decade, and now the gain is flat. That's the equivalent of saying that we added 20 dB per decade past that transition point. So the zero effectively adds 20 dB per decade. But let me be more clear. The resistor, the current limiting resistor, removes the effect of the capacitor, which was to reduce the gain at 20 dB per decade. But removing that effect of reducing the gain is like adding gain. This current limiting resistor doesn't add gain, it just removes the effect of the capacitor. But when we look at the individual effect of 
that current limiting resistor is to effectively at 20 dB per decade. And again, since the voltage across that capacitor is now close to nil because it's a, it's, it's a short circuit, we see that the phase effect of that capacitor is no longer uh, is 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 no longer apparent in in the output voltage. So that means that short circuiting that capacitor recovers up to the 90 degrees that were lost to the shunting effect at lower frequencies. In other words, this current limiting zero recovers up to 90 degrees that were lost to the pole that that capacitor produced in the first place. At the transitional point, of course, it recovers half of that, so it recovers 45 degrees. So what we're saying here, to summarize, is that a parallel capacitor here, the first effect is to pull away current from the output and therefore reduce the gain of the circuit. So it produces the effect of a pole. But as frequency continues to increase, that capacitor becomes a short circuit with respect to a series resistor. So the series resistor current limits the capacitor, and in doing so, it basically removes the effect of this pole that it produced in the first place. Removing the effect of that pole is basically saying adding the effect of a zero. And it's an in-phase zero because everything that the pole did now is absent and it's removed. So it removed uh, negative 20 dB per decade are now removed and that's like adding 20 dB per decade. Uh, 90 degrees of phase shift that were removed by the pole are now recovered, so we recovered up to 90 degrees. Thanks for watching.